Hey everybody, Sean Allison here. So you finally went out and you got that flounder. Now what do you do with it, right? So short video, let's talk about some of the finer points of taking the meat off a of flounder. All right, so we've got our flounder here. We're gonna get ready to fillet them out. Uh, how you're gonna prepare this when you cook it is gonna determine how you prepare this now. Um, we'll talk about a couple different ways, but ultimately I'm gonna cut the fillets out of this guy. Uh, but this is actually a southern flounder. These are probably the most common flounder we have here. We also have gulf flounder. These tend to be a little bigger. Uh, both of those flounder are left eye flounder. What that means is, you know, both eyes are on one side of the body, but if you stand the fish up with his mouth oriented properly, his eyeballs are on the left side of his body. That makes him a left eye flounder. There are there are right eye flounder out there. You don't have a lot of those around here. Um, but this is a nice uh, 19 and a half inch fish here. See where I gigged him right before the season closed. Uh, if you're going to cook these things whole, um, you can leave the head on, leave the body whole like this and just kind of bake them whole. You will need to remove the guts. Uh, that gut cavity is kind of right here, runs from this little fin down to about here. You take your finger and you can feel where the stiff meat kind of ends here. And all these guts will have to be taken out. You can kind of just slit this open, pull that out and cut it, and get rid of that. I would take a knife or spoon and scrape uh, these scales from back to front, scrape all the scales off of it real good, and just bake the whole thing whole, put it in some foil with butter and whatever you want to season it with, you know, go wild. Uh, I've used a Cajun injectable marinades on these where I injected it, let it sit overnight, and that, that was pretty good. Um, but we're going to strip this guy out. Uh, I'm going to end up with four pieces on this guy. The top is the thick side. Tends to kind of dome up pretty good on the top here. These fillets will be pretty thick. The biggest one being the top shoulder here. This one will end about there because of the gut cavity. And then the white side, uh, there's, there's meat here as well, um, but this is a thinner side. This is the underside. The meat's thinner on this side than it is on this side. Uh, with smaller fish that are like barely legal, 14 to 16 inches it's almost not worth the effort unless you're really good at this to go in here and get the flays out because they can be really thin and really difficult to get out of here uh, anyway this guy's definitely gonna still provide some good flays and i got two more in the chest here as well right got a couple of gray snapper as well uh, that'll be video for a different time Right, so now when I want to take this guy apart, I prefer to take the head off of these, get the guts and the head off, rinse everything, and then start taking my fillets. A couple of reasons I do that. Nobody else really does that, honestly. A lot of people question why I do it. I don't like having the guts and all that stuff up here while I'm sliding the fillets around in it. Also, when I go to kind of get under here to remove these fillets with the head out of the way, it's a little easier to get the knife in there and get, get stuff apart. Uh, than having to kind of try to cut around it. Uh, some people are really good at that. I just kind of like to take it all off. So anyway, we want to cut this guy. Ultimately, if we're going to leave the head on, we're going to cut this guy right down the middle here. And you kind of see a line kind of forms where the meat divots right here. You usually take a thumb, shove that in the gills, shove the other ear, grab them on top or shove that finger in the eyeball up here. right about here you could take your finger and feel the bone come up to about here i want to go under this fin cut down there find that gut cavity and i'm just going to cut a straight line through there now i want to cut this down from front to back here now the spine on this fish does not go directly up the middle like this like you would think and straight toward this fin it actually comes up here and the meat is attached to that bone so the meat is divided accordingly if you cut straight up the middle like this you're gonna leave a wedge of meat here that's gonna be almost useless so cut up a little bit as you start on the top up here 
And as you pull backwards, normally the scales will start piling up in front of the blade here. You know, but it'll just kind of push them out of the way, just wipe them off. Take a second swipe at it. Just push it all the way down to the bone. All right. Now, once I got that down there, um, I'm ready to start taking these strips off. I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the head here. I've got the guts already starting to get juice everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. We're at the way I've cut this on this side, I'm going to cut that free on the top. I'm going to cut this free on the bottom. So when I flip it over, I got marks to line up with. I'm going to cut it the same way as I did on the top. Now I can just kind of twist this, break the bone. And most of these guts should just come out with some really hard pulling, right? Get that out of the way. Give us a quick rinse. I like to keep everything wet. It keeps the guts and stuff from sticking to everything. Drop my fish everywhere. All right, we'll give this a quick rinse. Get all the guts, all that stuff out of here. I like it to be nice and clean when I take the meat out of here. Right, so now I want to take the blade, and we're, here's the spine. You see the spine coming out way up here, not down here. It comes out right here. I want to take my blade, and where I have this cut, I'm going to, when I hit bone, I'm going to curve it in and cut all the way out to the edge here. And this helps to have a really flexible blade for this, a long, maybe 7-inch blade, 7-8-inch seven, blade. Um, nice and sharp it helps quite a bit, too. When I get to the edge, I'm just going to cut it out on, on the top side of this fin here. I want to leave that fin behind. This is where having the head gone helps a little bit getting started. And I'm just going to kind of cut in, let the bone guide the knife. And I'm kind of cutting just, just, just with the tip of the knife. All right now... I got way out here to the edge. I like to just lay the blade in here and just kind of pull it out. All the way nice, clean down to the bone. Nothing left behind here. So I want to take this flay. I'm just going to leave it connected to the fish. This gives me something to pull against here. Starting at the tail here. I'm going to cut in. A little piece of the fin in there. All right. I'm cut in on the tail, try not to cut through the skin. Just kind of angle my blade up slightly and kind of push it as I kind of do this. I'm not so much sawing through this thing like a piece of wood, as just doing a figure S with the blade as I push it through. Um, but that should come off pretty easily. Nice clean fillet, nothing left there. Got a little bit of skin left here, but see this frilly stuff on the outside edges here. This stuff actually is gonna fall right off. And you should pull it right off and just get rid of it because when you cook this, these are gonna just turn into little pieces. Maybe you, if you're doing a broth or something like that, you know, stew, this would be fine. Uh, but you're not gonna be able to, this is gonna be really hard to fry or do anything else with. So there's my fillet. Normally right here, there's a little triangle right here. I take my finger, there's actually some bone in here. And there's actually a line that you can see and feel here. I'll just kind of cut that little piece off just to get rid of all those little bones. All right, nice solid. There's the biggest piece I'm gonna get off this fish. The rest of my skin off of here. Beautiful. Roll that up in some boudin. It's about as good as it gets. Okay, so that takes care of the big shoulder piece here. We got this loose flap of skin. Just going to cut that free. 
throw that in my bucket and get rid of it right so now I got my bottom piece here with my head removed and everything I can kind of just cut into this follow that bone down same as I did on the top follow the ribs all the way out to the edge just kind of push the blade let the blade flex and kind of push itself out to the tip and once you get it all the way out to the edge I can kind of cut that free leave that a little connected right try not to waste any meat here slide him over another pretty good chunk off the top there again this frizzy fuzzy looking stuff's going to fall off those are the muscles that are the fringes here that are controlling these outside fins uh, It's a separate muscle than what controls the ultimately the, the overall movement of the fish um, But it, it it separates and kind of just falls off. There's not much you can do about that. This was the edge of the stomach lining Where this little curved area is I promise there's little bones in here uh, Best thing you really do is if you really don't want bones in this if you have little kids or something is just to take your knife and just kind of go right back behind here and just cut that corner off and get rid of it. Um, if you're a little pickier like me, you can kind of feel around, try to trim them out best you can, or even maybe just decide to eat around them. They're pretty, they're pretty small, but I don't really feel any. So we'll call that one good. Right, so that's the thick side. We'll get rid of our strip here just to get it out of our way. Get rid of all of our scraps. Flip them over. You see this side's a lot thinner. Those fillets aren't going to be nearly as thick on this side. Now, same thing. You see the ladder line really well on this side of the fish. Runs up the body. You have this big old jump right here. You can see that, that line there. That's where the spine runs. That's actually the, the line where the spine and the muscle tissue connects to the spine here. So that kind of gives you guidance when you go to take your knife and cut down the center here like we did on top. Get that started I like to keep wiping the scales off because they'll they'll bunch up on there and stop a blade from cutting and you'll skid off the top all right go all the way to the tail turn around over here on the head end same thing just because I'm right-handed I always do this left piece first but kind of cut in I'm cutting through some bones on the edge of the stomach lining here that's all right I'll trim those out later same thing cut in let the blade fold under gets kind of thin back here sometimes you got to be careful if you cut too deep these bones will come off and be as part of the fillet like it is right here you see the hole already um, but when I try to pull this off that bone is going to get in the way when I try to cut this free so I want to kind of get under that and take that, leave that as part of the fish I'm leaving behind. All right, cut that all the way out to the edge. Cut this free. Same thing. Start down here on that tail end. That's going to be something to kind of grab onto. I left a little bit behind there again take all that off I kind of consider that scrap uh, I'll have to get this I'll have to go back and get this white piece off of here but with flounder a lot of times there's black stuff in the meat sometimes you see this black spot here they often have parasites and they're black and that's exactly what this is this is a little parasite it looks like a little ball like a little like a little cherry little bitty black circle um, honestly you could cook them and eat them and they're harmless I don't like to eat them it's kind of gross just knowing they're in there um, but I normally I just I'll just kind of cut that out and trim that out and rinse it really good and it'll be fine once you cook it up honestly even if you left it in there it would be fine once you trim it out and they show up really well I see another one right there and they're pretty common uh, as bigger as flounder get bigger they tend to accumulate more of these all right so same on this piece this is the piece that was right up against the edge of the stomach lining actually see a piece of the stomach lining here 
in a kind of a nasty hole where I stuck them with a gig. Uh, this one I'm actually going to go ahead and trim out. I feel a lot of bone right in here. I'm going to kind of take my knife, cut in here at an angle like this. And cut back until I don't feel my knife hitting bone anymore. There we go. And the real fragile bones are real easy to cut through. you got to cut nice and easy doing that. All right. Let me go ahead and take this off of here. Now, when this happens, this is kind of a, a pain in the butt to go back in here and, and fix this a lot of times. Um, best advice I can offer is try to get a corner of it free, like that there, that you can get the blade back under and start cutting. But you got to get under it enough to hold it down. Once you get the blade going enough and you, you get some clearance, you can get a good finger hold on it, then you can kind of keep going. And boom, I salvaged it. I didn't have to cut a big chunk of meat with that. I got to get the skin off by itself. All right, another good fillet there. And then the last piece, the, the, the shoulder on the underside. All right, we'll get rid of that. Again, just cut in on the edge here. Cutting downward because that spine right here runs as a slope. So you want to kind of dig in and then follow the bone outward. Right. This is open on top, so I could just kind of cut it free up here. Push my blade in. Be careful you don't push this through and cut your fingertips. Right, I got a bone right there. I feel it. I'm kind of cut under that. There we go. right here there's nothing left holding this so this piece is being stubborn about coming off here blanket for the skin there we go get that off there all right back over here just cut that free all the way up through the edge now to the tail all right it's transparent now it ain't much left to him all right there's all that loose stuff that's gonna fall off there's bones in this little, you can see the triangle right here. There's going to be bones in that triangle there. All right, take this off. Get a good grip on that and kind of just wiggle the blade back and forth as you push it through. Try not to, I don't like to really saw at it. All right, so that'll come off. Pulls right off there. Again, that black stuff, I'll go in here before I vacuum seal this and get rid of that, those black spots, those parasites, all right? Pull all my loose stuff off, if I get it off here. Again, there's that triangle that almost falls off on its own. Kind of just pull it right off there, all right? So there's my fourth fillet. Get rid of my body, Let's snap him in half real easy. So ultimately, here's what I ended up with. That's one fish. I got two more fish in here. <laughs> so these flounder, that's that's a pretty good meal right there. That with that one fillet, you feed one or two people. So one of these fish, uh, you know, about 20 inches, will feed feed quite a few people. But that's really about it. Uh, I'm not gonna make you watch me uh, paint through the next two. I'm just gonna kind of rip through them real quick. But Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something from it. Hope it helps you maybe clean flounder. This is different than pretty much any other fish. I don't clean any other fish this way. Kind of just flounder because of the way they lay on their side and so on and so forth. But again, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you learned something and see you next time. All right, so I've got a couple of little gray snapper here. They don't look very gray. They're, they're pretty gray when they're alive. Real light ash gray color. Uh, after they die, they tend to kind of turn this dark brownish green on top and kind of brick red on the sides. They look a little more like a Cubera after they die. Um, but you can actually tell by down in the roof of the mouth there, there's a little arrow. Uh, I'm probably not going to show up on the GoPro, but that's how you can identify gray snapper is that they got a full stick stem going back on the arrow. It's a gray snapper right 
So people call these dogs snapper, call them all kinds of stuff. Uh, mangrove is another very common name for this snapper. They're pretty good. Uh, they're very liberal on the limits on them. This is a legal fish, right? So th these are pretty easy to, to fillet, much like a trout or whatnot, but they're a bit scalier than something like a trout. They're not really that soft bodied. Um, I'll take this guy here. Cut around those fins. I'm gonna get rid of all that. Mm. Done. All right, now I'm just gonna take my blade and follow the bone down, just like I would a trout or whatever. Down to the tail. These smaller fish, a really sharp knife really helps. Separate it from the tail end here. Nice little snapper nugget, get rid of that stomach lining. bones right here right in this middle section to about here so I'm gonna go in here I'm just gonna trim that middle section out <laughs> I gotta I could just fry that whole nugget just dip it in uh, cornmeal fry it need it just like that perfect gray snapper one these guys are really small they tend to be a lot of trouble to fillet sometimes just because they are so small, the bones are so little. Um, but they are snapper, and they're again, they're pretty, they're pretty common around here, and they're pretty liberal in the limits. So they're worth targeting, in my opinion, because they're just that good. Not a whole lot to eat on, but if uh, you can go out there and fill an ice chest with these, literally, and you fill an ice chest with these, you know, it's a couple pieces per fish like that, you uh, make a pretty good meal out of it. But thanks for watching, and that's Gray Snapper. Easy as that.